Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Thursday, August 1st, and the month of August is upon us. You know what that means? Preseason football right around the corner, college football right around the corner, NFL regular season right around the corner, and we still got the second half of Major League Baseball, which will lead us into the postseason. Add in UFC, MMA, smaller markets, tennis, golf, NASCAR, and I'm really excited about what's ahead. And more importantly, we got some work to make up, which keeps us plenty motivated. I think we split yesterday. I think I had one play or two. Not much going on at all. Uh, let me see what I got for you today that I can share. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got a tennis, tennis, tennis for you. You ready? In D.C., in D.C., Jordan Thompson, Jordan Thompson. Uh, we laid minus 125. I'm good up to minus 135, I believe, in Jordan Thompson matchup. Uh, in D.C., Jordan Thompson, I think that goes today, if not early uh, tomorrow morning. So we're going to take Jordan Thompson. I also got a steam move that was sent and then got a stop order. So maybe some uh, mixed information the over nine in uh orioles guardians was sent and uh actually within three minutes i only got one bet down so i'm gonna have to eat it um but they put a stop order on it for whatever reason now with that said i do have some freebies for you before we get to some uh what else before we get to some of the questions or comments and keep in mind tomorrow tomorrow is friday I do Wager Talk TV early in the morning. I will have a steam room at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern. So we will not have our sidebar to the steam room tomorrow. And I may not be able to do it Saturday as well due to the early UFC. The UFC card goes off 9 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday. I'll be firing a ton of MMA action as I touched on yesterday in the gambler's perspective, a lot of the betting syndicate action is coming a lot later than it did earlier. And I'm seeing a lot of that in MMA had one of the originators on as a special guest yesterday who also explained the exact same thing, um, which is why we're doing a lot of UFC stuff on fight day. Uh, so going to be tied up with that. Plus all the baseball that's coming in on Saturdays. And that's what I'm a little worried about once football comes. There's just so much info coming in and I have to vet it. So when all these moves are coming in during college football, college football sides, totals, first halves, second halves, um, needing to vet that means throughout the week, I have to prepare. I have to be so prepared. And what I do is I go through each game, dig deep with my handicap. I circle those that I feel strongest about, and I have to do that by Saturday, Sunday night, the week prior, so that as soon as the group start betting into it, Sunday night, Monday morning for the following week's football, I already know, is it a confirmation? Is it conflicting? Or do I have no opinion and how to deal with it? It's just a lot of work goes into it, but our bet size are bigger. As most subscribers remember, a lot of a reason we finished number one in profit combined NFL and college football last year is we didn't have a ton of volume. I will go lower volume, bigger bets. I, that's what I like to do when it comes to NFL and college football. Rather than huge volume with small edges, we narrow down the volume and aim for those bigger edges. They're not as available in sports like baseball, NBA, college basketball, because they're not as heavily bet by the betting public. So wise guy money outweighs it in a lot of matchups and totals in NFL, pretty much every game and a lot of college football, that's not the case. And because of that, we're able to really take advantage and you'll see a lot of 4% plays, very little 3%, the majority be 4%, which is 0.25 because we don't like a 90% risk of ruin. We work with a 20% risk of ruin, which means a 4% rating ends up being 1% of bankroll. We're just firing 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, and just firing, 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 firing. I cannot wait for college football and NFL and uh, have my groups ready to go. Got my college guy, got my pro guys, 
got two other college groups, got one other uh, pro group. So uh, I'm just so excited. But we still got baseball action to crush, to crush. And uh, let me get to that as we speak. So one, oh, one of the so totals that I passed on, I share with different movers. That's how we confirm. They came in on the over, over at eight and a half. Now it opened nine, went to eight and a half. They went over Miami, Atlanta. Now I, I talked about the manipulation that's been happening in all sports, most notably now in Major League Baseball. Need to check if it's going to carry over in the college football and NFL. If that's how the betting syndicates are going to approach this year based on getting down with the legalization in more states, but the monopolization of these books that are just eating everything up. I'm seeing that they're being forced to manipulate the market early and then get the uh, lines that are being copied off the screen moving in the direction they want. And then they come back and unload. So the Miami Atlanta could fall under that category where they dummy it down to eight and a half to go over. Um, that's what it appears. But I want to see, will it hit nine? And when it gets to nine, is there resistance? Is there any resistance at the sharper outs? That's how I'll look to confirm the strength of the total when I don't have an X's and O edge. Um, and that's one of them where I did not see an X's and O's edge. Now, Here's a free pick for you. We're going to side. Let's go with a side. Let's go with a side. Late game. Late game. We're going to go with Colorado Rockies. Colorado Rockies at plus money. Anything plus because this is a coin flip game at worst. At worst. Uh, simply based on Pythagorean wins and losses. We have an edge. Uh, simply put on uh, the, the Colorado starting pitcher. Coming off. Of, here's the problem. This guy's going 0 and 5 over his last five games. Three of those games, he's only allowed one earned run. One earned run in three out of five. So my man's just getting no run support. No run support. I think that changes on the road. And uh, we're going to bet them on the money line. We also bet them first five money line. Now, I've limited, I've lowered our risk by not diversifying as much. So when it's a dog like this and they bet money line and then first five money line, first five run line, rather than split the bets up money line and run line in the first five, I just went with money line. That way we don't pay the 135 chalk to get that half a run. And the worst that happens is a push on the money line or we would have lost it anyway. But the goal is to minimize that vig and uh, that's what we're doing. Again, I'm always conscious of where we are for the year where we are over the last three years, over the last five years, over the last 10 years, and more importantly, where we sit for 2024. So let's go with Colorado Moneyline and Colorado First Five. Colorado Moneyline, Colorado First Five as our free best bet for today. Now, Now let's get to one or two of these questions. All right. And like I said, you can connect me anytime. We could have that long ass conversation about anything and everything. So let's get this started. All right. Non-narrators 8917. What's the best place to buy gold? Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. This is not financial advice, but here's what I've done. I've, I've picked up coins, believe it or not, here in Vegas at times when I've had some money, like when I've made a little score. And I've had some extra money in my pocket. I've hit those gold shops and I've been able to negotiate some decent prices on, on coins. Like you get them talking and laughing. They know what the gold price is per ounce. Um, I know what they're trying to sell it at, what I'm willing to pay it as pay, how much over spot. And I've been able to work out some decent deals to grab a coin here, a coin there, a coin here, a coin there. But when I buy in bulk, when I'm buying bars, I'm going strictly to Lear. And Hartford Gold. Lear and Hartford Gold, I've had the best uh, experiences with. Gold Co. also, I, I put them in third. Gold Co. has been good to me as well. But Hartford Gold has actually been the best. Um, getting me my stuff, 
There's also some, um, not 401ks, but IRAs. You could also do a, a gold IRA. There's companies that allow you to set up your IRA in gold. Take a look at that. Take a look at that. Um, I get it. It doesn't appreciate the way the stock market does, but it doesn't depreciate either. And it holds its purchasing power. That's what matters most. Dollars aren't as valuable when they lose purchasing power. Like, sure, you're still getting $100,000, but now that $100,000 is only buying $90,000 worth of goods. That's how they're able to steal from us without having to tax us. They inflate away our wealth by devaluing our purchasing power. And that's going on every single day. Every day, your dollar is losing purchasing power. Every day, when that happens, gold, and other valuable assets are increasing in purchasing power. And we're seeing that right now. Speaking of gold, let's look at gold. I told you the other day that there was a weekly topping tail that did get confirmed. All right. But what happened? The following week, we got the breakdown and then gold went back up this week. But that's what we wanted. We wanted the retrace of the topping tail. We needed a 50% retrace of the topping tail. We got that. Remember what price we were looking at? I'll tell you because I have the note right here. And my notes say, topping tail, what's that, at 26.65, gap at 26.85. So 26.75, 25.75, we, we expect the retrace. And since it retraced, what have we gotten? We've gotten gold coming back below that line, below that retrace line. Charts don't, charts are going to do what they're going to do. See, this is, it's not my opinion. My opinion is irrelevant of what I think is going to happen. I just trust the chart. That's how I deal with sports betting. My opinion don't mean shit. It's as valuable as anybody else's. But what I trust is the market and understanding how markets work. and with uh, trading commodities, crypto, and equities, I just trust the chart. I don't care about my opinion. I don't care what CNBC says. I don't care about any of that stuff. What is the chart telling me is going to happen? And right now, that's what the chart was telling me, that gold was going to reach pretty much that new all-time high and then was going to come back down. And when the market comes down and we're seeing that again, what are we seeing? Just take a look at the leaders. Look, look at the leaders. BlackRock. Have it after five straight up days, boom, a big down day. Berkshire Hathaway, after four straight up days, back to back down days. Look at the QQQ. After nothing but up days, we now have what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of the last 12 days in the Qs, down, down. S Let's see these, the, S the SPY. One, two, three, four, five. Four of the last six days down in the SPY. Why isn't it we gotten the, the demolition? Is because people have been pretty much trained to buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. That's what's happening now. Eventually, there will be no more money to buy the dip. That's when the bears take control and crush this market. That's when the recession kicks in, the confirmation of the recession. That's when our debt spiral gets out of control, that's when we start realizing the dire situation the banking system's in, the real the, the commercial real estate sector is in, our commodities sector is in, the silver squeeze that's about to come up, the dollar uh, losing its reserve currency status. Like there's a lot on the horizon that nothing to be scared about. Just need to prepare. You just need to prepare. That's all there is. Just prepare. Save your cash, put it in hard assets. Get it out of the stock market right now. Everything's at all-time highs. If you're joining the party over the last three months, you're too late. It's been climbing up now since what? Let's go and look. November of 2023. SPY was at 412 two days ago. 
Is it five sixty? Four hundred to five sixty. It's almost a fifty percent increase in less than a year. In the SPY, that's the top five hundred companies in the in the country. Their value increased by fifty percent in less than a year. Has your bank account increased by fifty percent less than a year? Has your home gone up fifty percent less than a year? Has have your assets have have your savings your pay gone up fifty percent? It's not sustained. It's just it's fake. It's not real. It's not real. Eventually, the truth comes out. Like I always say about even sports betting, numbers do not lie. Hot streaks, cold streaks, they're both imposters. They're both imposters. They mean nothing. What the truth is, take that imposter mask off. That's where the, 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 that honey is. That's where that truth is. That's where that truth lies. And that's what we're looking at here. These valuations are ridiculous. They make no sense. And you don't want to be holding the bag when it dumps. So if you've made your money and it's on paper, make it real. Paper gains don't mean shit. Paper gains don't mean shit until you cash them out. All right. All right. Last but not least, can you write out the risk of ruin units needed? Yes. Yes, I could do that. Give me a sec. Great question. All right. All right. All right. Risk of ruin. You ready? Or a 1% risk of ruin. That means if you have an edge, like I've proven at wager talk, based on the amount of bets that I've placed and the uh, amount of return on investment, if you want a 1% risk of ruin, which means you will double your bankroll 99 out of hundred times, only lose it one out of hundred times, you need a thousand units. So if you have a $10,000 bankroll, you need to be betting $10 a unit. That's it. If you're betting 1x to 5x like I'm doing, then the biggest bet you should have is $50. Flat bet 50 on the dog, bet to win 50 on a favorite. Now you tell me in all honesty, how many bettors with $10,000 in their pocket are going to be happy betting $30 on average per play? 1x to 5x, average play 3x, even 4x. How many are going to be happy betting 30, 40 bucks? They're going to say, wait, I increased my capital by 20% this year. That's only two grand. What am I going to do with two grand? 20% increase in a business is left and that's bad. I know people that own restaurants that, that where there's a line out the door and they're happy if they, if after all the overhead, if they're left with eight, 9% of the revenue is profit. So please be realistic. What kind of business can you open with $10,000 that you're going to be making clear 2,000, 3,000? That's what realistic is. Most people just aren't. So what do they say? They get the 10,000. They say, I'm going to start betting 500 a game. And what happens is the risk of ruin is through the roof. And it doesn't matter whether you have an edge or not. You're going to lose your bankroll because here's why. Let's say you want a 10% risk of ruin which means nine out of 10 times you will double your bank. One out of 10 times you will lose it. You still need 500 units. You still need $5,000 to bet no more than 50. You can bet no more than $50 and you need five grand. Now, let's say you're working with a 20% risk of ruin like I am. You need 400 units, 400 units. So if I'm betting $100, a unit, I need 40 grand. If I'm betting 1x to 5x, 100 to 500, average play 300, I need 40 grand just to have a 20% risk of ruin, which means I will lose my bankroll two out of 10 times. That's going to happen. Hopefully it doesn't happen within the first two years that you're betting and you get wiped out. Hopefully it happens after you double up because eight out of 10 times you will double it up. Hopefully you double up the first three or four years, five years, and then you start losing. That's what happened to me. I got lucky. I think I won eight straight years before I had my first losing year with, with that when I knew I had an edge. And that's how I compounded going from 100 text to 500. Now I'm betting 1,000 to 5,000. 
with a, a 20%. I actually have a less, I have about 10% risk of ruin because I have a backup. Um, and finally, if you want a 40% risk of ruin, which means six out of 10 times, you'll double it. Four out of 10 times, you will lose it. 200 units. That's correct. You need $20,000 to bet $100 a unit just to have a 40% risk of ruin. Think about that. So with 20 grand, if you're betting $100 a unit, you still will lose that bankroll four out of 10 times. That's almost 50-50. Think about that. How many people with 20 grand are betting like that? Not many. Not many. $10 units in 2,000. How many people that got 10, two grand are betting 10 bucks? Not many, right? They got two grand. They're betting $50, $100. They're not betting $10. If you're betting more than $10, you're, you're working with a higher than 40% risk of ruin. That's why I, I, I can't say this enough. No one talks about this on gambling Twitter. No one talks about this. Instead, we're talking about this guy gives up, this team gives up 247 yards per game. This team gives up, this pitcher is, uh, has a 2.4 ERA when pitching against blah, 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 blah. Who gives a shit? What's my risk of ruin? That's what I care about. What am I, well, how am I going to increase my capital? Stop telling me this nonsense that means nothing. Tell me something that I could learn from. So never forget, never forget. In fact, just so you understand, just for me to go play like four hours of blackjack to have that edge, I need a hundred units just for a few hours. So in those four hours, I'll make 600 bets. I need over a hundred units just there to feel comfortable. This is why 99.5% of sports bettors have negative lifetime earnings even many of those with the ability to win long-term or with access to winning information. And they still lose because they overbet their bankroll because they're working with a risk of ruin that makes it mathematically impossible to be profitable. If you overbet your edge, you can't win money. I can't put it any more simpler than that. No matter how good you think you are, if you're betting more than your edge allows for, you're going broke. This is why I am so careful in the bet sizes I share. And this is why I've been able to profit eight of the last nine years and gone through those losing streaks. Sure, we could have made 5X the profit, but it would have been also 5X the headaches and the ups and downs and the volatility. I don't want that. I want us to sleep comfortable. Even during our worst run in maybe three, four years I've had, which is good if you're moving forward, like looking over the next five, six months, this is actually good what happened the last two months being the worst in a very, very long time because we're only going to progress towards the mean. But have you gone, if you haven't managed risk correctly, you're out of action. You're not going to be around when I do damage. That's the key. Got to keep you around. Let's see what Bitcoin's doing. I had a tough night, tough night, tough night for crypto. Very tough night. Very tough night. Oh. All right. So perfect timing. Perfect timing. That's going to do it for today. Whether you follow, fade, or ignore, I just hope you cash them, don't trash them. Make sure you go down there and smash that like button. Ask any questions you may have. Thanks.